All right, up next we have our next speaker, our very own Corona Wala doctor, Dr. Faisal Mehbu. Dr. Faisal is our alumnus and he is a diplomat who wears the Board of Infectious Diseases. Dr. Faisal has done his training in infectious diseases from the Stroll Memorial Hospital and he's got a whole bunch of experience in treating this pandemic. Very recently, Dr. Faisal was bestowed the Damagaya Nukleyas on the Pakistan Independence Day. We all are immensely proud of him. He is our pride. And today, your favorite Corona Wala doctor is going to talk on COVID-19 treatment options. What is the abated evidence? So, I'm going to be brief. Uh, um, and I guess English Urdu mix would be would be okay. So, um, so we did this webinar maybe uh, three months ago, and uska tarab mein chizen change bhi hai. There's some new guidelines, some thing jo mismaakar the we don't use anymore. Some things now we use more uh, than before. So what we'll do is we'll go over some of the theory about management of COVID, and uske baad then I will have um, a couple of cases, uh, and the, these are all some real cases jo humne dekhe the yahan pe, and and humne kya kya unke saath to give an example how to apply um, actually what we we've learned. So game plan, like I said, we'll review the current management dono from the point of view of diagnosis because since last time uh, antibody tests are something which are much more common. The classification kya hoti hai COVID ki, um, we'll go over some of the therapeutics, ke aajkal kya istamal karte hai and what we are not using. And then finally we'll end up with cases, so it's not going to be, we'll be done quickly in half an hour or so and then maybe we can open for Etc. Etc. But as our epidemic has evolved, we have also evolved in terms of our uh, clinical criteria. Um, and uh, yeah, the symptoms can be very sudden. So I've had patients who said, "Ke bhai, unko ek din bukhar ho, ho gaya, and that's the only symptom they have." So yeah. taste uh, during dinner um, so symptoms can be symptoms can be very subtle um, in, in this disease so you should have a high suspicion that this could be COVID um, and people who don't fulfill the whole criteria you should maybe even consider them that they should be tested um, because if you have a shock then better to test it with your symptoms alone yani ke, if you have a shortness of breath, um, yeah, any of the two of the following symptoms. So uh, they may have fever, um, sh uh, shaking with chills, muscle pains, isme, uh, hota hai, um, headaches, uh, sore throat, uh, and a new loss of taste, a new loss of smell. Now, if you have a patient, you will get a miracle, you will get a symptom, 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 you yeah, maybe you have a contact with like, a COVID patient. Ke so even if you have symptom, you could maybe potentially test um, uh, these people. Diagnosis, in the eggs of money, we used to have um, a tier 1, tier 2 um, uh, patients. But now everybody has a priority of giving a check. But there's some that there's a very high priority. For example, if you have a doctor in the hospitals uh, with any of these symptoms, you should check if you have COVID. Hai, ke but keep in mind that there are many things that you have to do. Pishab is soft jalan hai, uske white cell count bade mein hai, uske CT ke andar palin nephritis ki bika infection aara hai. So as a patient you don't really think that COVID hai, but agar bukhar hai, apko wajah samaj mein nahi aari hai, khansi hai saath mein, so then you should check for COVID. Healthcare workers are also a higher priority for checking because obviously as healthcare workers we meet other people, we want to make sure ke hum kisi aur ko infect na karein. And then woh log joke hai bhoat mil joke hai rahte hai, so these would be in the prison, shelters, hostels, these areas. And then finally, um, if somebody comes to you, just the x-ray may look like COVID, even other typical symptoms now. So one symptom which uh, I didn't mention here is diarrhea. So somebody with diarrhea and test x-ray findings, you should think about COVID. The other people that you need to priority for test care is everybody else. So outpatients um, with symptoms of, of COVID uh, disease, healthcare workers who have symptoms, but they have exposure with, uh, with, with, with somebody who had COVID. Exposure ka matlab hi hota hai, ye ke they met somebody with COVID, but exposure ka matlab hai that they've been within one meter. Both should be wearing masks and the healthcare worker should also be wearing an eye shield at the same time. 
and then patients with no symptoms but obviously have had contact with with COVID patients. So these are these are our diagnostic criteria. But like I said, yeah, these are only guides. We can be always modify and change accordingly. Um, gold standard is still the RT-PCR for SARS-CoV-2, and it depends on the sample counsel yet. And um, because yeah, the key PCR hai, jo, jo, jo test hai wa, kei jaga se le sakte. Um, you can take an oral sample, but yeah, the oral sen sample ki sensitivity kam hoti hai, so it can miss disease. You can take a nasal sample, and actually, ab iske baad bhi aur studies aayi hain, jiske the nasal sample ki sensitivity bahut achhi hai. And in fact, yahan yeah, maybe we've now moved to uh, nasal sample. Isme hota hai ki ab sample jo hai, wo naak ke bilkul samne se lete hain, aur wo piche nahi leke jaate hain. Lene ka tarika is a little different in nasal sample because iske andar you have to put it in. Rotate it a few times, leave the swab there, and then we'll see swab we put in the other nose. Um, nasopharyngeal is what we normally do. Nasopharyngeal can there up knock in the ache in and you go all the way to the back of the throat. Um, a sort of uncomfortable test to do. Um, uh, and it's with also aerosol generation chance of that. And the last is saliva, and this is the, the newest way, and this is actually um, uh, also very uh, um, comparable in terms of getting a sample. ये हमने अब सलाइवा के दूसरे भी मसले मसाल होते हैं फॉर एग्जांपल सलाइवा को फॉरन रन करने की जरूरत होती है यू कांट कलेक्ट सलाइवा एंड उसको बाद में रन करें बिकॉज़ मुंह में बहुत सारे जरासीम होते हैं एंड इट कैन इंटरफेयर विद द विद द प्रोसेस सो um yeah you put it in 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 a type of a solution which will stabilize the saliva so so that's why we have not moved to saliva as yet but that's also an option uh, to do testing um mid terminate um is again after nasal swab but the the other diagnostic way is antibodies ab ye log bahut karate hain because it's obviously easier to do but antibody ke test blood mein hote hain um but yaad rakhiye this is not the primary way of making a diagnosis your primary way is still doing a pcr test um and uski wajah kya hoti hai in this um graph you'll see ke you have um symptoms jo ke yahan pe day 0 pe sorry infection jo day 0 pe develop hua aur aapke um uh, symptoms uh, ke day 7 ke baad hi aapki antibody बनना शुरू होती है और एक दफा एंटीबॉडी बनना शुरू भी होती है टेक सम टाइम बिफोर यू कैन डिटेक्ट इट इन योर बॉडी सो अम सो सो यू नो अगर तो आपका खांसी बुखार के साथ आता है क्या कहते हैं उसको सिर्फ दो दिन में खांसी बुखार के तो उसकी एंटीबॉडी उस वक्त नेगेटिव होंगे अम एंड द सेंसिटिविटी स्पेसिफिसिटी यानी कि द एबिलिटी की डिटेक्ट करेगा एंड आल्सो फॉल्स पॉजिटिव जो है वो डिपेंड करता है फ्रॉम किट टू किट एंड बहुत सारे किट्स अवेलेबल हैं सो यू नो यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल कि नेगेटिव टेस्ट पे आप ये ना बोले इस पेशेंट को कोविड नहीं है um uh, and the the other thing i want to stress is ke yaad rakhiye ke this test does not tell you ke aapko neutralizing antibody can you ab neutralizing antibody kya hoti neutralizing antibody wo antibody jo hoti which prevent you from getting uh, which is kind of drop immunity for provide karti um and this is a, a a little bit of a, a diagram i'll explain it's not very complicated ye covid ye sars cov2 hai the virus which causes covid and yahan pe teen antibodies hai ye wala ye wala ye wala अब ये एंटीबॉडी जो है दिस इज बाइंडिंग टू द द बॉडी ऑफ द वायरस एंड ये आपको प्रोटेक्ट नहीं करेगा अगर आपके अंदर सिर्फ ये वाली एंटीबॉडी है और आपने आपको दोबारा आपके अंदर वायरस आए तो वायरस कैन प्रॉब्ली स्टिल इन्फेक्ट यू ये वाला एंटीबॉडी नीचे जो है इज इज अगेंस्ट सॉर्ट ऑफ द स्पाइक द आउटसाइड ऑफ इट मगर जिस तरह इसकी बाइंडिंग है अगेन इट विल नॉट प्रोटेक्ट यू फ्रॉम अ सेकेंड इन्फेक्शन वाइल दिस लास्ट वन इज न्यूट्रलाइजिंग एंड विल प्रोटेक्ट यू एंड याद रखिए यू डिवेलप मेनी एंटीबॉडीज अगेंस्ट कोविड um yeah sars cov2 and agar aapke positive antibody aa raha hai most tests uh, do not tell you ki ye neutralizing hai ya ye non neutralizing hai so you cannot cannot use these tests to tell you ke aap immune hai ki nahi hai so ye antibody test batata hai ki agar aapka positive hai so a positive test tells us ke is patient ko pehle sars cov2 ho chuka hai it uh, agar igg igm dono positive hai to that means ye kuch hafton ke dauran se ki ke andar wa hai और अग्रेसिव आईजीजी पॉजिटिव है तो देन दैट मींस कुछ हफ्तों पहले हुआ है एंड दैट्स इट ये आपको क्या नहीं बताता है दिस डज नॉट टेल यू अगर आपका पॉजिटिव आता है कि आप रिकवर्ड हो यानी आपकी तबीयत ठीक हो गई है बिकॉज़ हो सकता है आपके एंटीबॉडी पॉजिटिव हो एंड यू स्टिल हैव सिम्टम्स एंड साइंस ऑफ 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 कोविड एंड इंफेक्शन क्लियर नहीं हुआ हो अम दे डू नॉट टेल यू एंटीबॉडीज न्यूट्रलाइजिंग है यानी कि क्या ये एंटीबॉडीज आपको इम्यूनिटी प्रोवाइड कर रही है कि नहीं कर रही सो यू कैन नॉट डू दिस टेस्ट एंड से कि अब मैं इम्यून हो गया हूं और ये वायरस मुझे दोबारा इन्फेक्ट नहीं करेगा ओनली ओनली टेल यू कि इस शख्स को पहले हाल में कभी कोई इन्फेक्शन हुआ एंड इसका बरक्स व्हाट इज अ नेगेटिव एंटीबॉडी टेल यू वेल इट टेल्स यू कि इस पेशेंट को इन्फेक्शन नहीं हुआ है मगर ये भी हो सकता है कि इस पेशेंट को इन्फेक्शन हुआ है 
मगर बहुत ही रिसेंट हुआ है विद इन द लास्ट वन वीक टू टू वीक्स बिकॉज हो सकता है एंटीबॉडीज तो पॉजिटिव ना है हो सकता है एंटीबॉडी बने हों मगर उसके डिटेक्शन लेवल बहुत कम है इट्स सो लो कि वो आपका जो टेस्ट है वो डिटेक्ट नहीं कर पा रहा या हो सकता है कि पेशेंट एंटीबॉडी बनाए ना एंड um, ना बनाते हुए भी पेशेंट्स इम्यून हो सकते हैं um, बिकॉज एंटीबॉडी के अलावा दूसरे भी इम्यूनिटी एंड देन फाइनली हो सकता है कि एंटीबॉडी बनी हो मगर जो आपका जो टेस्ट चेक करें जिस एंटीबॉडी को वो एंटीबॉडी बनी ना हो एंड दैट्स आपका एंटीबॉडी नेगेटिव है सो नेगेटिव टेस्ट कैन ऑल्सो डज नॉट मीन के यू नॉट इम्यून या आपको इन्फेक्शन नहीं है सो बी वेरी केयरफुल वेन यू लुकिंग एट दीज एंटीबॉडी टेस्ट बट लेट्स गो टू समरी इसको वाकई इन्फेक्शन हो रहा है तो पहला काम जो है वो आपको इन पेशेंट्स को क्लासिफाई करने की जरूरत है एंड ये इज वेरी सिमिलर टू द प्रीवियस वन जो विच वी विच आई शोन एंड इसमें थोड़ी सी मॉडिफिकेशन है याद रखें अ पेशेंट कैन बी ए सिम्टोमेटिक और आल्सो प्री सिम्टोमेटिक फॉर एग्जांपल इस ट्यूसडे को मैंने एक पेशेंट देखा था एक्चुअली पेशेंट नहीं पेशेंट की वाइफ थी एंड उस पेशेंट की वाइफ को और कोई सिम कुछ भी नहीं था वो एक्चुअली अपने हस्बैंड को लेके आई थी एंड इस वेंसडे को नाउ शी हैज शी डेवलप फीवर एंड कॉफ एंड कोविड um symptoms so she was pre symptomatic and remember symptom shuru hone ke 2 din pehle se virus nikalna shuru ho jata hai to agar maine mask aur mera head shield mera shield nahi pehna hota and i did not know its patient ke andar se covid virus nikal raha hai i would have had an exposure right so so um so asymptomatic can also be pre symptomatic mild ka matlab hai ki patient ki saturation 94 se upar hai extreme ko finding nahi hai um sirf khansi bukhar wagaira chal raha hai yaad rakhiye mild patients can also be very sick you can have patients with very high fever and feeling very weak and tired moderate ke andar aapki saturation 90% tak chalti hai and aapke in, uh, x-ray mein infiltrates less than 50% hai severe ke andar you will have pneumonia saturation less than 90% and x-ray ke andar more than 50% involvement and then finally critical ke andar you have um multi organ failure and shock and ards so so uh, asymptomatic mild moderate severe critical and a जो भी जब भी पेशेंट देखें पहला काम आपको ये करना है कि डिसाइड करना है ये इस स्पेक्ट्रम में कहां पे फिट होता है ये कहने को आसान है बिकॉज याद रखें कि देर इज अट ऑफ ओवर लैप एंड यू मे सी पीपल हु हैव मॉडरेट डिजीज एंड मोर देन 50 परसेंट एक्स रे फाइंडिंग माइल्ड डिजीज जिसके अंदर सेचुरेशन ठीक है मगर एक्सरे में चीजें नजर आ रही है या यू मे हैव पीपल जिससे नाइनटी परसेंट सेचुरेशन है मगर एक्सरे के अंदर बहुत सो देर इज um um that there is um, uh, overlap mere ke sabse zyada jo zaruri jo isme cheez hai wo saturation hai so saturation is probably the most important uh, finding that you see um and iske sath yaad rakhiye ki covid mein dusra masla hota hai ki you have a immune system jo ki thoda sa hyper ho raha hota hai um and if you look at early infection um ke andar and and then uh, uh infection actually sorry stages mein chalta hai you have early infection you have a pulmonary infection and a hyper inflammation phase and this is very this is exactly very similar to the slide i had shown in the previous covid um because this concept has not changed um and shuru ke andar you see a viral response your viral response phase is in the body ye sab virus ko control kar raha hota hai matlab kuch logon ke andar virus control karte karte wo haath se nikal jata hai immunity haath se nikal jati hai and you have this hyper inflammation stage jisme the um, host ki khud apni inflammation uh, host ko ya patient ko damage kar raha hota hai and you can actually very nicely overlay aapke mild moderate severe critical on this isme early phase mein jab aap uh, ya mild infections ke andar aapka virus control ho jata hai and critical and severe phase ke andar it's your body's immunity actually jo ki aapko tang kar raha hota hai clinical symptoms we sort of follow this iske andar shuru ke din mein aapko lymphopenia mild lh mild heat aana bada hota hai fever cough hota hai baad mein you develop jab aapki inflammation badhi hoti hai to ye extra kharab ho raha hota hai aapke uh, shortness breath hoti hai hypoxia hota hai and agar aapne kuch bhi nahi kiya to then you eventually may develop shock ards and aapke inflammatory markers bahut bad jate hain um in this and this is called the cytokine release syndrome definition wagaira we'll talk about um uh, in a second um the other thing which i have not which i just realized i should have put in this is ke um we also look at covid in terms of um weeks of illness so pehle hafte mein you have fever cough thoda zyada hota hai second week mein we worried about ye hyper inflammation wale syndrome third week in the what you worry more about is strokes and hypercoagulable states fourth week in the you worry more about secondary infections um uh, which happen after covid and fourth week beyond you critical disease mein hota hai skin the 
you will see a ferritin which is more than a thousand and it's rising in the in over 24 hours yeah a sweatin of a single threat more than 2000 in somebody who requires high flow oxygen yeah ventilation um yeah agar um yeah aapka alc absolute lymphocyte count is less than 800 um yeah lymphocyte percentage less than 20% yeah a neutrophil neutrophil lymphocyte ratio yani ki aap neutrophil percentage ko aur lymphocyte percentage ko divide kare and if that's more than 5 um and along with this you have a ferritin which is more than 700 LDH more than 300, D-dimer more than 1, um, a CRP more than 70. And if you have admission pay, you have any of these three present, so then you don't even have to document a rise. Now, you do numbers and these are useful, but you have to these are not hard and fast um, numbers. But these are useful numbers to keep in mind. Uh, 1,000 ferritin, 2,000 ferritin, yeah, an NLR of more than 5, LDH more than 300, D-dimer more than um, uh, 1, yes, CRP more than 70. Unfortunately, the definition is validated. Different guidelines use different definitions. These are the ones we use in Pakistan. Um, and all these markers may not rise together. Sometimes CRP is a lot of 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 CRP. And sometimes we've seen these elevated without any clinical symptoms. And in general, then there's a confusion to treat or not treat. And generally, we say treat the patient, not the lab. Um, and then these markers are non-specific. And this is one pet peeve that I have today is that people have started calling these the COVID markers. Um, and patient comes who has, um, so for example, um, a line infection, yeah, pneumonia. And pneumonia in the beach, like COVID or not, all these things are growing. But they say that the patient has pneumonia and these levels are growing, so it will be COVID. Yeah, but these are only, only important. One time it will be COVID. These are not COVID markers. These are inflammation markers. Um, and then NLR can the egg was has bad yalaki, egg the pup is you go steroid dogia, infection children, do strap, so neutrophils vessi burda, then the NLR is very useful on admission, but not beyond. Um, the other concept to keep in mind, and then we'll talk about how we apply these, is hypercoagulability. And thrombotic events have been seen, autopsy skin there, uh, and pulmonary embolism, DVT carried zada hota in merizo kin there. Um, and a good D dimer barawa hai, though, that also increases mortality. Now there is Obviously, with everything COVID, there is a debate that in sub key importance kitni hai. Albata, uh, we do know that um, uh, there are now some studies showing ke you do, that these patients do better with anticoagulation, especially later on in the disease. So, what are our principles of treatment? Supportive is the most important. Um, just in that there's oxygen um, uh, therapy, which is, I think, the cornerstone of treatment. Anticoagulation um, is also very important, especially in moderate, mild, moderate severe, and critical. And CONSI, what we'll talk about. Antivirals may we have remdesivir, which is now readily available. Um, uh, and then anti-CRS medicines, which is the steroids and tocilizumab. Uh, and this can be steroids, the role um, over the last two months have really, has really, really uh, changed and evolved over time. Uh, then they have convalescent plasma, just clearly, I, I, I think I have one slide for only. So mild disease. Treat this is an outpatient, in the patient of the doctor, there is no saturation, it's okay. okay. Severe symptoms, so you may need to admit, but when we were searched, we were treated a lot of these patients at home as well. Um, those who have high risk of severe disease, uh, they have to check the saturation check the saturation machine, which is pulse ox, they get very easily, they don't have to pay about uh, 2,000 rupees, they have to pay for it. Labs, in the CBC, CRP, ferritin, LDH, you can do it, especially in the severe disease ka risk. Ho. So elderly, ya pregnant, um, ya jinko aur koi met, uh, diabetes, hypertension, if you have a young person, please check it out. Um, and consider admi uh, admission if the markers are very big, if there is no desaturation, just for observ observation. But if you have good um, uh, communication and you can get in touch with them frequently, then you don't need to do it. Antibiotic, please, 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 please azithromycin. Na de. De, I think every single patient I've seen is on azithromycin. There is absolutely no role, no role of azithromycin in treating COVID. Um, this is a viral infection and azithromycin is an antibiotic, antibacterial. Um, okay, and since then, since those early studies, this kind of confusion thing, now we have good randomized control trials also showing that azithromycin has no role nahi hai, and in fact, no antibiotic role nahi hai for prophylaxis. And please be aware of some very little doubt. Luckily, now it's a little less, but back in the time, Sanamakki was very, very popular and Sanamakki we saw people coming with diarrhea and acidosis um, and hypotension. Um, a moderate uh, COVID is um, uh, sorry, moderate COVID can them dakhil karte um,
if you want to keep saturation above 94 percent prone positioning is very very helpful and it's in there are patients again kya curvet filating ya curvet lete rahe so pet ke bal lete hain ya um, seedhe haath ulte haath and you know um, uh, even changing every two hours helps uh, because mustaqil pet pe lete na thoda sa mushkil hota hai especially agar wazan zyada ho uh prophylaxis uh kinder this is we don't not talk about uh, uh thrombosis ki prophylaxis in moderate disease we use enoxaparin 40 mg once a day sub q severe and critical kinder we use it at a higher dose it's called enhanced prophylaxis at every 12 hours um labs kinder uh, obviously uh, cytokine release storm ke markers every 48 hours um steroids ka role kya hai to steroids ka role you change why can now we use steroids in anybody who needs oxygen regardless ki unke uh, labs kya hai so anybody just for oxygen ki zarurat padi aap unke na steroid shuru kar dein ideally dexamethasone 6 mg per day magar uh, we've used uh, prednisone and it also works well magar um, dexamethasone is what we would ideally prefer but it's uh, either is fine duration depends on response generally agar response acha aata to i usually give 5 days um, uh, or not more than 7 days magar sometimes people require oxygen for much longer um, uh, and un cases ke andar then we have to um, sort of uh, keep the steroid going for longer please do not use steroids in people who do not need oxygen um and why do i say this this is the data just ke basis pe steroids uh, ka role um, uh, came about and um uh, will i just go over this uh, slide uh, these graphs very quickly um this is all participants who got steroids and yahan pe you have the number of days into on which they were on steroids and this is mortality so you, you can see here ke um by day 28 people who got uh, did not get steroids and the mortality was higher right so about 25% people died versus about 20% people died who got steroids um this is patients who are on the ventilator and unke you can see in ko steroid nahi mili unke andar the mortality was much higher 28 days about 40% but jin ko steroid mili unke andar was about 30% so steroids made a good difference in improving mortality and these are people who also got oxygen only again usual care um was the steroids and cost you as many unke andar less people died but look at this one jinko jo oxygen pe nahi the jo oxygen pe nahi the unke andar jinko steroid mili unke andar slightly more people died compared to jinko steroid nahi jinko steroid nahi mili now this was not statistically significant um um yani ke uh, uh, p value is ki was not significant magar there was clearly no benefit and potentially potentially a little bit of harm maybe so if somebody is not requiring um, uh, oxygen do not do not use steroids um, in them um uh, therapeutic anticoagulation um so obviously you'd use it anybody jin ke andar pe ho chuka hai ya there's a strong suspicion of thrombotic disease uh, jab investigations can't be done ya agar dram is more than 3 times upper limit normal to hamare um jo assays ke mutabik se it's about 1.5 dose is in oxypan the standard 1 mg per kg every 12 hours about 60 mg every 12 hour for a normal person and duration is about 1 to 3 months so in these people if you've had to use uh, enoxaparin chutti ke time pe switch into rivaroxaban um it's 10 mg um uh, per day for about a month i usually use a month i don't use three months um because we've also seen people come back with bleeding so you've got to um, um sort of balance this risk and benefit um agar if you, if you have um documented um uh, pe then you just follow the standard care so again uh, prophylaxis uh, uh, heparin ke now i've given you three recommendations moderate ke andar 40 qd severe critical ke andar 40 bid aur agar dd mein more than 1.5 times upper limit normal hai to then 60 bid um and then chutti ke time for this for this last group only chutti ke time pe rivaroxaban at 10 mg remdesivir um remdesivir we use in moderate and severe covid agar unko option ki zarurat hai again agar crs na ho and probably mild disease may probably there's not much benefit in critical may probably there's not much benefit but you know as more and more studies come out this this may change uh dose is 200 mg iv then 100 mg um iv uh, once a day for 2 to 5 days so uh, from from day 2 to day 5 sorry and we give this for 5 days and this is again the data based on which uh, this uh, had come up and it's a little small but i will read it out. i'll show it out to you this is overall isme yaad rakhiye ulta hai this is per percent survived us wale graph mein was uh, percent die so you can see everybody who got remdesivir the percent who survived yahan pe is about 75% was more than those who did not get uh, remdesivir which is about 60% or so um these are people who did not get oxygen and you can see it looks like remdesivir mein survival zyada tha but this is not statistically significant but those who got oxygen it's a nice clear difference between the two but those who are on the ventilator yeah those who are on um, sorry on niv 
या वेंटिलेटर देर वॉज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू सो रेमडेसिवे का रोल कहाँ था इट्स ओनली इन पीपल हु रिक्वायर्ड ऑक्सीजन सो फार नॉट फॉर द वेरी सिक या फॉर द वेरी फॉर द नॉट वेरी सिक and then finally the last is tocilizumab this is only for people with crs and this ka bhi role change ho raha now some studies are showing ke maybe iska itna benefit nahi hota and some studies from our own centers within the country also is showing ke maybe iska itna benefit nahi hai but for now we use it for people who better neuro despite giving steroids so never not first line and this is for the really sick the sickest of the sick severe and critical patients ke andar um uh, but remember it's when second infection bird up in our own population we've seen about one in three people develop a second infection after tocilizumab dose is 4 to 8 mg per kg iv and you do not give more than 800 mg and not more than a second dose at 12 hours um only yaad rakhiye iska half life bahut lamba hota hai ek dafa aap tocilizumab de dein so it stays in your system for the next One month actually. So um, देने के बाद ऐसा नहीं कि अब खत्म हो गया एक महीने तक वो काम करती रहती है इसके बाद लॉस ऑफ कॉन्ट्रेडिकेशन स्पेशली इफ दी हैव अनदर इन्फेक्शन ऑन गोइंग एंड देन कॉन्वर्सिव प्लाज्मा एक्चुअली इज नो लॉन्ग अवेलेबल एनी मोर दज लिमिटेड एफिकेसी इन ट्रायल्स um but it's going to be exact role is being defined as most studies come and maybe in three months if you do this again uh, I, th- this may change uh, finally. So I'm uh, so this is just a quick summary and then we'll do five very quick cases and then I'm going to finish maybe another five minutes. So if somebody fulfills the testing criteria, you do a PCR. If the PCR negative is, so you retest. If your suspicion is very high, um, and in such cases, you may want to do an antibody at the time of the day. Um, PCR if positive is, uh, so then you assess the severity. Remember, first thing to do. Um, if the patient is stable, has saturation more than 94 percent, that means he has mild disease. Hai. Aap inko ghar pe rakhe, ya home IC, ya isolation facility bhejein. अगर सेचुरेशन 90 तक चल रही है आप 94 के दरमियान तो ये मॉडरेट है और इनको आप हॉस्पिटल वार्ड भेजें और अगर निमोनिया है एंड बहुत डिसेप्टेड कर रहे हैं या ए आर डी एस या शॉक के अंदर हैं तो दिस इज सिवियर क्रिटिकल एंड ऑब्वियसली दिस पेशेंट टू बी इन द आईसीयू या इन द हाई डिफेंडेंसी यूनिट माइल्ड डिजीज के अंदर आप सपोर्टिव केयर करें कॉल द यू टेल देम टू कॉल यू अगर कोई सिम्टम है आप या वर्सनिंग होती है मॉडरेट के अंदर यू गिव ऑक्सीजन यू डू प्रोन पोजिशनिंग एंड डोंट फॉरगेट इन ऑक्सेट फॉर्टी um uh, in severe disease you give oxygen via niv um non invasive uh, or you intubate if required yeah the thing we do not do early intubation um anymore and then prone positioning and then high dose enox um steroids um you use for um my moderate severe and critical in all patients um uh, tocilizumab you use if somebody fails steroids in severe and critical disease only may be in moderate because there like i said there is a little bit of overlap but mostly in severe and critical and then in severe you use in moderate and some of the um severe patients but not really um in the mild and critical patients so so this is sort of a quick rundown of when you use what um there are lots of unresolved issues what do you do with agar lady dime bada hua hai what do you do agar markers bade hue hain patient critical nahi hai what do you do with prolonged hypoxia we know that these patients can eventually develop some of them um uh, cough um or cryptogenic organized pneumonia which need prolonged steroids and then you have all these other issues with that for example we had one person who then came back with pcp pneumonia um how long to treat uh, with uh, with steroids for in these patients all right so i'm going to do five really quick cases um uh, the first case is a 75 year old man he had a road traffic accident had multiple uh, fractures post op uh, pre op they did a routine sars cov 2 uh, pcr positive or koi symptom nahi the he was saturating 98% on room air um uh, this is what is x ray showed which is uh, pretty much normal um so uh, and these are what his lab showed his counts were were fine um his crp was elevated lh is elevated that in his normal d dimer bahut bada hua tha and he was on room air so um so a simple case and in this what did we do and and uh, and keep in mind the damage of bade hote that in this case is probably the fracture the same goes with the crp is probably the fracture um so what do we do we classify this patient as a mild disease only uh, and management may obviously we gave him supportive care for his fracture we did not give this patient steroids no saturation normal tc we did not obviously give tocilizumab uh, even though markers bade hote this was not because of crs this was because of the fracture um remdesivir ki koi indication nahi thi and we obviously anticoagulated this patient not because of covid but because of the fracture second case a uh, 38 year old man he has history of fever and cough uh, uh, five days pehle came to the er er mein short of breath the saturation 91% thi so 90 or 94 ke darmiyan um x ray mein ye nazar aa raha hai you can see uh, about 50% or more involvement in x ray ke andar um with bilateral infiltrates 
ان یہ ان کے لیبس تھے تو ان کا ٹی ایل سی ایٹ پوائنٹ فور لمفوسائٹ کم تھے ان کے سی آر پی بہت زیادہ نہیں بڑھا ہوا تھا مگر ایل ڈی ایچ بہت بڑا ہوا ہے نہیں سی آر پی بہت بڑا ہوا ہے ایل ڈی ایچ بڑا ہوا ہے فیریٹن بہت زیادہ بڑا ہوا ہے ڈی ڈائم مالیا لیبیٹڈ اینڈ ہیز آن ٹو لیٹرز آکسیجن رائٹ سو سو وٹ ڈی وی ڈو وی کلاسیفائی دس پیشنٹ ایز ماڈریٹ ڈیزیز رائٹ سو سو نائنٹی نائنٹی فور کے درمیان ہے ایون تو ایکس سے خراب تھا ان کا اینڈ آلسو وی فیل کہ So we gave this person oxygen, prone positioning. Uh, we put this patient on steroids because when you have oxygen, you have steroid ki zero hai. Humne ki zero hai. Nahi di thi, inko kam oxygen. Ki zero thi and he was otherwise stable. Um, uh, but we obviously watched him closely. Um, this is a perfect patient who will use remdesivir. And one thing I forgot to mention, before remdesivir, you have to make sure LFTs are normal. Um, anticoagulation, we gave at the 40 mg once a day dose because he had moderate disease. Thi inko. Um, Um, and this is what happened on steroids um, over the next two, uh, two days. And you can see his CRP um, uh, went down from 164 to 20. LDH uh, gradually came down. Ferritin was no problem, but like I said, Ferritin can take some time to come back to normal. Um, and oxygen over the next three days, he was now on room air and did very well. Um, uh, and this is X-ray you can see uh, between 4.6 and 6.6. X-ray cleared up very nicely um, uh, after uh, therapy. This next case is a 36-year-old man came with cough for 20, since the 27th of May. Um, he got cervix Z, he got vitamin C, and he got sanamaki. Uh, then he came with abdominal pain and severe vomiting on the 2nd of June. Saturation was 98% on room air in the ER. He was complaining of mild epigastric pain, and he was tender in the abdomen. And in the labs, the skin, what's prominent is ferritin was 1400. LDF was mildly elevated. CRP was fine, and D-dimer was, um, was normal. X-ray was, was completely normal. There's nothing wrong with the X-ray. Um, so what did we do? Uh, how do we classify this disease? Remember, classification is clinical, right? So even though in Kashwaitan Bhav Bada Vata, this would be a mild disease. Um, uh, uh, and the management was no oxygen. He did not need it. No steroids because he did not need oxygen. Dosiluzumab ki to baati ni banti. Or in kutham ne remdesivir bhi ni diti. And anticoagulation bhi ni because it was just mild disease. Um, he was just hydrated and this diary was because of the sanamaki. He remained um, stable. Um, I did actually redo the test. Uh, his ferritin went up to 2300 after this and then he became absolutely um, uh, uh, normal um, and he, was, he, he did fine. So, so remember, treat the patient, not the lab. Fourth is a little complicated. A 34-year-old physician, um, he developed fever on the 25th of May. He got an x-ray which showed bilateral infiltrates and being a physician, he thought maybe he covered it. So he got his SARS-CoV-2 PCR, though the fight at an interval of three days, and both were negative. He took azithromycin, as everybody with, who suspects themselves to have COVID took for seven days, and then set trixone for three days, and then it was still going on. So he got admitted for persistent fever. We, uh, we did a repeat PCR, and it was also negative. Tha, um, income. And this is actually, you can see these mild say, infiltrates on the left, middle lobe, um, or is it maybe some on the right side um, also. And this is labs, and you can see the labs are pretty much normal. Uh, Ferritin is, is, is fine, LDH is a little bit bigger, CRP is mildly elevated. Um, uh, so, so in such a patient, there was a suspicion of uh, SARS-CoV-2, COVID, ka, and we had two tests, three tests which are negative. We actually did a CT for COVID. Now, a CT scan for COVID um, uh, is, is very useful, uh, but keep in mind that um, it's very sensitive. So, the disease... easily rule it out a diagnosis again if you have more than mild disease. But this is a perfect question just because the antibody kara and the antibody was positive. Um, and the very next day he started desaturating. Um, and because of desaturation, we then classified him as a moderate case of COVID. We gave him oxygen, we gave him steroids, um, toxicity, we gave him remdesivir, um, and we gave him the anticoagulation. So standard dose for moderate disease, and he did well. Final case um, uh, is uh, somebody, a 55-year-old man who developed fever and shortness of breath, came to the ER. Um, he was hypoxic and he needed to be put on BiPAP and they put him on prednisone immediately. Um, blood cultures the next day were reported to have gram-positive cocci. Um, these are his labs. Hemoglobin was uh, elevated, but his white count was also elevated at 16.5. Now, this is se solar jova is probably the steroid. Um, CRP was markedly elevated, ferritin was markedly elevated, LDH was pretty high. Um, this is X-ray, you can see more than 50% involvement um, in, the, in, in the chest X-ray. 
So what do we do? This was a severe to critical case of COVID. Um, uh, gave him oxygen, obviously gave him steroids, like I mentioned. Income the tosuzeb nahi di thi, and kyun? Infections. We gave this patient remdesivir. Uh, no, sorry, we did not give this patient remdesivir because he was already in critical disease. And we anticoagulated him with a high dose of anticoagulation. Um, uh, his steroid work continued, but unfortunately was intubated, went to the ICU, and blood culture eventually grew MRSA, um, and vancomycin was started. Uh, and because he wasn't responding, and he was otherwise um, responding to the vancomycin, we actually eventually did give him tocilizumab. Um, he had a very rocky course, um, but he was ex successfully extubated and shifted out um, on, uh, on the port. On the second, um, before he was extubated, his extra got worse. His blood cultures grew stenotrophomonas multifilia, which is an organism which can cause pneumonia. Um, so we added levofloxacin for this. And this was probably because of the tocilizumab and also because he was intubated. Um, but mashallah, he got discharged in room air. When he came to my clinic, he came in walking. Um, and um, you could not tell that anything was, was wrong with him. So a uh, success story, but not all of these patients end up like this. Um, uh, case 6, I'm going to actually skip. Um, so, so time to wake up. So very quickly, gold standard is uh, PCR. Antibody testing may be done, but only in certain cases. When you're seeing a patient, first thing all, classify the patient for severity. Observe for any worsening. Uh, look for um, CRS. You anticoagulate moderate disease or higher. Um, and, and, and obviously steroids for anybody who needs oxygen. And uh, remdesivir for uh, patients who are moderately uh, sick, but not mildly uh, sick. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faisal, for an excellent and, and, and a very liberative talk Thank you. Uh, on the management and diagnosis of, of COVID. So there are a few questions I think if you may ask. Yes. If you may answer. So if a sense, there's a question, if a sense of smell is lost for the, for two to three months, Yes. Uh, then is this symptom related to COVID or something else? So la, 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 loss of smell can be because of many, many things, um, you know, uh, ranging from a simple, any other vi your, your, your viral URI to other infections. Um, if this patient has documented COVID, then this could be because of COVID. Uh, but, you know, um, prolonged loss of smell can occur in COVID also, and it's worthwhile checking uh, for the disease. Keep in mind that after three months, your COVID PCR may be negative and an antibody may be positive. Um, another question is, how has COVID declined in the extent that it has in Pakistan, despite SOPs not being followed and precautions are not being taken by the majority of the general public? So, you have the unfair question. You can't talk about that. It's a million dollar question. But I can answer a little bit, uh, so, so, the thing is, it's not one thing. It's, 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 uh, it's uh, many things, uh, I think, that has happened. Uh, to, to, to start off with, um, we're blessed with a younger population in Pakistan, so we were never going to have a very, very bad epidemic because the other kids, severe disease that happens in more severe illness. Um, the second thing is that we did this graded lockdown and graded opening as opposed to a hard lockdown, um, which may have helped. The third uh, thing is that this disease travels in networks, um, right? So it's not hava mein hota, ye aapke apne network, social network mein jata hai. And we feel that after um, you had uh, this, this big super spreader event that occurred um, at Eid, most of these networks were already saturated and jinko lagna tha, unko lag chuka tha already. Um, a th a fourth thing um, is that our management actually improved and we've so shown this at AQ also, where um, even though severe illness increased, um, mortality dropped because we got better and better at treating um, uh, these patients. But I think the most important thing to keep in mind, and this is what Dean Adel is also saying, is not to let your guard down. Um, and this disease has not, by any, by any stretch of imagination, disappeared. We're still seeing cases coming in. Um, and I can tell you, for the last few days, we are now seeing a little bit of a surge again. Not a surge, but an increase in cases, uh, both in the hospitals, um, in the Delhi Medicine Clinic, and my own clinic. So be careful. So uh, another question is, other than three main symptoms of cough, fever, and shortness of breath, what are the other symptoms that are related to COVID-19? So we mentioned uh, in, uh, severe fatigue and myalgias, loss of taste and smell. Uh, about 20-30% people can have diarrhea also. And it's very interesting because these symptoms do depend on the patient population. For example, women tend to have more taste and smell while the symptoms. Men tend to have more cough. Um, uh, but
So this means nothing. It means that you had the infection and, and, and the infection's finished. Um, antibodies for COVID, yes, sorry, antibodies for SARS-CoV-2 um, can persist in the, in, in the body. And, and there are some studies which show that in three months, they start coming down. Uh, the amount of antibodies you make depend on how severe infection was. So mild and uh, asymptomatic may not develop a lot of antibodies. Severe develop a lot of antibodies. And the antibody test, again, does not, does not, does not tell you about immunity and does not tell you gap for the viral infection host of the kidney host sector. And in, in, in fact, uh, just two weeks ago, maybe it was last week, um, the, the one um, case of this very well-documented reinfection from a Hong Kong patient showed that at day 10, in, after the first infection, he had good antibodies. But when he came back with his reinfection, and it was a completely different SARS-CoV-2 virus strain, um, this patient uh, had lost his antibodies, but quickly regained it again in, in, in five days. Um, so, so, so please, 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 do not use these antibody tests uh, to get a false sense of security gap from infection in yoga. Um, uh, it means nothing at all. Okay, so this is a question starting with a comment. And that um, azithromycin has no role, that's what she said, in treatment, but it's still being prescribed in routine nationwide. Um, a, a gender distribution of patients could have been a valuable addition. So do you have um, any idea of the gender distribution? Did we see a lot of males? Did we see a lot of females being admitted? So our males, male to female ratio was about the same, slightly more uh, more males. Um, uh, remember, however, um, our general distribution of patients within the hospital is uh, a little tricky because we know that men tend to have more severe disease than women, um, and there are many other reasons for that also. Um, uh, so obviously, if you're only looking at inpatient data, you're going to see uh, slightly more male uh, predominance. But with, if you look at the, the, the country data, it's about 50% 50, 50 um, uh, for, for both. Um, uh, obviously, admitted patients. We saw older population compared to what you see in the in, in the in the city in the country. You we saw more uh, people with comorbids, but you know that, that's the nature of the disease as, as expected. So, any insights about why spread in Pakistan and deep decline in Pakistan suddenly compared to India and Iran? And can we expect a second wave? And what are the chances of reinfection? Okay, so, um, so 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 India and Iran and Pakistan are close together, but they're very different, and they uh, and the way that the infection spread is also very different. Um, Iran, remember, had its first big outbreak during uh, because of uh, the pilgrimage uh, and a lot of crowding um, at that point. So that that is um, and and obviously with this big mass of the people getting infected, it spread very rapidly. Um, uh, India, on the other hand, is different from Pakistan in that they have really, really increased the testing to a much greater degree than Pakistan has because they've moved um, uh, for testing in, in, in the community from PCR to something called the antigen test, just my protein they grow directly. And this antigen test um, is less sensitive, but very rapid and very cheap. Um, so they've actually really increased the testing. And the more people you test, the more people you find. So when you look at the total number of cases, uh, you obviously it look like you, you you have a lot more cases uh, because you're detecting more. Um, India also has a lot of uh, a, a lot more cities and big mega cities than Pakistan does, and we know that the disease tends to spread a lot in these urban areas. So we you would expect that they would see a lot more infections um, over there. While we really, to be honest, have only two really big mega cities um, uh, and then other um, uh, relatively smaller cities. So we've got. Uh... A lot of questions coming in, and take two. One is what is okay? I'll, I'll, I'll do rapid, rapid 30 <laughs> seconds. Answer. Okay, go. Coffee with Natasha. Go. Roll of okay. ivermectin in COVID. No role of ivermectin. Um, the studies which show that it reduces the, the, the viral levels. Uh, if you use the same amount in humans, you have to use, uh, I think it's about 100 times the dose. That is normally recommended. Can SARS CoV 2 be spread through blood transfusion? Um, probably not because we don't see a lot of viremia. What about small risk tobacco? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, so there are patients whose result is positive, but there is no symptom. Is this considered to be a good thing, a bad thing? It's considered to be a lucky thing. Um, and remember, 30 to 50 percent people may actually have no symptoms and still have the disease. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Dr. Thank you. Thank you, Tassi. So uh, next presenter is Rosina Roshan.